The tragedy of Baron Trump just gets worse and worse. Trump and tragedy are not two words that you'd naturally associate with each other, and the reasons are not so far-fetched. Born as an heir apparent to a multi-billion dollar empire to the infamous Donald and Melania Trump, Baron Trump is one person who is far removed from the everyday realities of the average individual. However, the former Trump Tower and White House resident has also had his fair share of troubles. From being targeted for witch hunting by the opposition to being under the intense media scrutiny since birth, Barron has had to live a life that has placed huge demands on him. But despite his parents' best effort to shield and protect him, he has still been the subject of various attacks. In this video, we'll reveal why the tragedy surrounding Barron Trump keeps getting worse and worse. You'd think that Donald Trump would have been over the top with excitement when he learned that Melania was pregnant for Barron. But in reality, the reverse was the case. It was a surprise Donald that learned that Melania was pregnant for Barron. They were barely one year into marriage and were not considering conceiving a child yet when Melania got pregnant. With four grown children from previous marriages, Donald was far removed from the reality of raising a newborn son. He came home and I told him he'd be a daddy and his reaction was, at first, he needed to take it in. It was a real surprise. And then he was very happy. The Slovenian-American former model told People magazine in 2006. Donald, on the other hand, was surprised that the pregnancy happened so fast. I expected we were going to have children, so I wasn't totally surprised. But I was surprised by the speed of it, he said. Born on March 20th, 2006, Baron Trump was ushered into what would be an unusual life for anybody. Things would be dramatically different for the newborn as you'd see in subsequent parts of the video. He frequently switched schools. Although Baron went to luxurious schools, he didn't have the luxury of staying put in one school. Compelled by the circumstances surrounding his life, he had reasons to switch schools frequently, something that he certainly wasn't too pleased about. He first attended Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School, located in New York's Upper West Side of Manhattan, which was close to the family's penthouse residence at Trump Tower. The 11-year-old Baron has been attending Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School on the Upper West Side. However, when Donald Trump decided to run for president of the United States, things began to take a dramatic turn for Barron. Barron was forced to switch schools when his family moved to Washington, D.C. Although Melania made concessions for him, deciding to stay in New York until he finished the school year, he was eventually enrolled at St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Potomac, Maryland. But that wasn't his only school change. After his father lost his re-election in 2021, Barron was again forced to switch schools. He moved to Florida, where he was enrolled at Oxbridge Academy in Palm Beach and is a member of the class of 2024. The frequent school change must have had a disruptive effect on the young Trump. Is Baron Trump autistic? Donald Trump's health records are not exactly in the public domain. Although the result of his physical examination was publicized in 2020, citing evidence of obesity, Donald Trump rarely shares his own medical history. And as such, it is unlikely that the health of son Baron Trump is out there. Baron appears outwardly normal in public. However, comedian Rosie O'Donnell challenged that notion in 2016 when she tweeted, per WNTW, Baron Trump autistic? If so, what an amazing opportunity to bring to the autism epidemic. O'Donnell's speculation in that now deleted tweet was based on a YouTube video dubbed, Is Baron Trump Autistic? The video asked whether Donald Trump's progeny had autism. O'Donnell pleaded her innocence when the motive behind her tweet was questioned. And he went bat crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and stay though. She denied taking a dig at Barron. True to her word, there is evidence on her website to suggest that her daughter Dakota has battled with a similar condition. Dakota was diagnosed with high-functioning autism. However, Melania Trump, in true protective mother fashion, hired an attorney to sue the person who made the hashtag stop the bullying video if it wasn't removed. Portions of a letter by Melania's lawyer leaked by TMZ read, The video allegedly seeks to stop the bullying of Baron Trump. Not true. 
The video did instigate further bullying by Rosie O'Donnell and others. O'Donnell later tweeted an apology, per Global, stating, I am sorry for the pain I caused. It was not my intent. I am truly sorry. He has been on the receiving end of plenty of jokes. Being the son of Donald Trump comes with a bit of collateral damage. Oftentimes, Barron gets caught up in the crossfire, in the war of words that ensues between his father, the media, and the opposition. Internet trolls have made taking pot shots at him their favorite pastime, all because they do not like his dad. Shortly after Donald Trump's inauguration, in 2017, Katie Rich tweeted, Barron will be this country's first homeschool shooter, Katie Rich, a Saturday Night Live writer, tweeted at the time. The tweet was later deleted, but not after Rich was suspended indefinitely. Barron's clothing choice also came under criticism. The youngest Trump doesn't have any responsibilities as the president's son, but the least he could do is dress the part when he steps out in public, wrote Ford Springer in the Daily Caller in August 2017. Fellow first children like Chelsea Clinton and Jenna Bush Hager were compelled to comment, defending Barron against these verbal onslaughts. The truth is, obviously, Barron Trump didn't ask his dad to run for president. It wasn't his decision, Hager told People magazine. Clinton, on the other hand, took X to share her feelings. He, he's a kid, for Christ's sake. You know, sometimes I think we really go too far in our political... It's high time the media and everyone leave Barron Trump alone and let him have the private childhood he deserves, she wrote. Barron always had a full security detail in tow. Although Barron grew up being surrounded by private security, becoming a first child meant that things had to be stepped up several notches. Having the Secret Service follow you wherever you go as a child is no child's play, no pun intended. Without a doubt, it was an adjustment for Barron when his dad was confirmed as the Republican presidential nominee. From that point on, things would take a dramatic turn for the youngest Trump. His every movement has to be watched, and he cannot move around unescorted. All these would have taken a toll on the then nine-year-old. Even years after exiting the White House, Barron was still under Secret Service protection. As a result of this, the school head at Oxbridge Academy in Palm Beach, Florida, was compelled to send a letter to the parents when Barron started schooling there. A small contingent of Secret Service agents will be present during each school day. We are working directly with the Secret Service to ensure that logistics and security work smoothly and discreetly, with little impact on students, faculty, staff, or day-to-day -day operations the letter read, according to First Coast News. Barron would remain under Secret Service protection until he was 16, while his father would have his protection for life. Rumors that his parents are headed for divorce have been rampant. As if dealing with the numerous demands his life places on him is not enough, Barron has the additional burden of dealing with rumors surrounding his parents' marriage. The media is filled with reports that they can't stand each other, and their body language in public hasn't helped matters either. There have also been rumors that Melania Trump has been wanting to file for divorce. Melania is, quote, counting the minutes until President Trump's term of office is over so she can divorce him. Although most of these rumors are unverifiable, a few have come from people affiliated with the Trumps. Melania is counting every minute until he is out of the office and she can divorce, said Omarosa Manigault Newman, who worked with Donald Trump when she was on The Apprentice and later worked as a White House official. If Melania were to try to pull the ultimate humiliation and leave while he's in office, he would find a way to punish her, she added. There's no telling how much of these information Barron comes across on a daily basis. However, being a high schooler means that he's at an age where he's impressionable. There's no telling the emotional and psychological toll seeing his parents' marriage being portrayed in a negative light would have on him. The videos of Melania swatting Donald's hand would not help matters either. Threats to Barron's life Sometimes things get even darker for Barron. A threat to life is no joke. Talk more of when it is directed to a young kid. In August 2023, a woman named Tracy Fiorenza made a court appearance after purportedly threatening to kill Barron. She was picked up from her Chicago home. 
after authorities said that she sent a letter to the headmaster at Barron's school in Florida that read, I will state that I will shoot Donald Trump Sr. and Barron Trump straight in the face at any opportunity I get. Fiorenza was charged with transmitting threats to kill or injure another person in interstate commerce in a criminal complaint, NBC Chicago reports. There are no indications as to how much Barron was aware of this. But whatever the case might be, one thing's for certain. And that is, news such as this would be unnerving to any teen. There was outrage on social media following this news. One Reddit user was quoted as saying, Book, prosecute, and sentence. Nobody should be threatening a child. Disgusting. Say whatever you want about Donald. He is in the public light because he wants to be. His son, a minor no less. He is off limits, another Reddit user wrote. Baron Trump wasn't excited to move into the White House. As opposed to other kids who would have been over the top with excitement by the prospect of moving to the White House, Barron showed some reticence about the proposed move. Baron Trump likely didn't anticipate how disruptive his father's election would have been to his life. Donald's election meant a new residency outside New York. Also, besides the intense media scrutiny he was going to be under, he was also going to be under round-the-clock surveillance by the Secret Service. All of these changes were quite intimidating for a nine-year-old. He does love New York, and he loves his school. Not so much living in the White House, Donald told People magazine in November 2016. I can help so many young people. And that's when he really starts to understand that it's a good thing, not a bad thing. But it's a little scary for him, because he thinks he is going to be taken away from his friends, he added. Barron had everything any kid could ever dream of wanting, but becoming the first son proved to be a difficult transition. Still, his parents did all they could to keep him out of the public eye. It is a long-standing tradition that the children of presidents are afforded the opportunity to grow up outside of the political spotlight, the White House press office said in a statement after the inauguration, according to E! News. Barron Trump tested positive for COVID-19. Barron Trump came down with COVID-19. This is rather ironic because after the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic back in March 2020, President Donald Trump downplayed its severity. The president went as far as calling it Kong Flu. In October of the same year, the president, wife Melanie, and son Barron Trump, then 14 years old, all got infected by COVID-19. In a since-deleted post on the White House website, per NPR, Melanie wrote that she worried about the effects of the virus on her boy, even after his initial test was negative. But Melania Trump says he showed no symptoms. According to the First Lady, he no longer has the virus. I couldn't help but think, what about tomorrow or the next day, wrote the First Lady. My fear came true when he was tested again, and it came up positive. Luckily, he is a strong teenager and exhibited no symptoms. In one way, I was glad the three of us went through this at the same time so we could take care of one another and spend time together. He has since tested negative. Donald Trump's condition was more severe than the other members of his household. The president required far more intense therapy at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. Melanie and Barron, on the other hand, were quarantined in the White House. They received treatment and took vitamins, as well as stuck to a healthy diet to aid their recovery. The president was full of praises for Barron for bouncing back from the experience. I don't even think he knew he had it because they're young and their immune systems are strong and they fight it off. 99.9% .9 said Trump. And Barron is beautiful and he's free. Donald Trump is facing jail time. Donald Trump is not new to controversies. However, things got pretty serious after he was slapped with charges that could land him in jail. The sheer idea of one's dad being on trial and possibly going to prison is horrifying for any kid. Baron Trump has had to grapple with the reality that his father could likely go to jail. Donald Trump has been indicted on dozens of charges, which include an alleged hush money scandal, election interference, classified documents, and more. Chances are that Donald will face time behind bars if convicted, although the duration of his likely incarceration is just as uncertain as the likely convictions. When asked if he worries about going to prison, Donald replied, 
I don't even think about it. I'm built a little differently, I guess, because I have had people come up to me and say, how do you do it, sir? How do you do it? I don't even think about it in an interview with NBC's Meet the Press. And while all of this is going on, Barron is simply trying to finish up his last year of high school, get into college, and move on with a life that he will eventually live on his own terms. For the time being, however, he's in the middle of a media storm that won't be winding down anytime soon. Why? Because Donald is running for president again, hoping to be elected in 2024. Baron Trump speaks two languages fluently. Having parents with different cultural heritage has its perks. Although Baron supposedly takes after his father, he has also inherited his mother's roots as well. In a 2016 interview with GQ magazine, Melania Trump revealed that Baron was fluent in her native Slovenian. It is said that he communicates with his grandparents, who lived near Trump Tower at the time of the interview, in Slovenian. However, that is not the only language he speaks besides English. Melania once bragged to people in 2009 that at just three years old, Baron was also speaking French in addition to Slovenian and English. He's very special. He talks nonstop, she told the outlet. But two years down the line, the narrative seemed to have altered. While making an appearance on The Joy Bihar Show, Melania said, Baron speaks two languages completely perfect. He goes from one thing to another, Slovenian, then English. Did he suddenly stop speaking French? Or did she momentarily forget about him speaking French? Could he just not be fluent enough to mention it yet? Does Baron Trump like croissants? These questions are begging for an answer. Baron Trump was believed to be the reason behind Donald and Melania Trump's push for an e-cigarette ban. Vaping grew exceedingly popular upon its introduction into the market. A huge percentage of the younger demographic preferred this substitute to actual cigarettes. However, in September 2019, then-President Donald Trump announced that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration would soon issue what he called some very strong recommendations related to flavored e-cigarette use. There had been multiple deaths due to lung diseases that were believed to be related to vaping. Another report attributed 450 lung illnesses to the relatively popular product. Melania Trump stated in a tweet, I am deeply concerned about the growing epidemic of e-cigarette use in our children. She concluded, We need to do all we can to protect the public from tobacco-related disease and death and prevent e-cigarettes from becoming an on-ramp to nicotine addiction for a generation of youth. In a follow-up press conference discussing the dangers of vaping, the then-president, who had his wife in tow, explained that this issue first came to his attention because of Melania's involvement. Without explicitly mentioning Baron Trump by name, Donald referred to him in a peculiar way. She's got a son, together, that is a beautiful young man, and she feels very, very strongly about it. Barron was 13 years old at the time. Consequently, a lot of Twitter users speculated that Melania caught Barron vaping. One example was hashtag Killstream founder Ethan Ralph, who alleged that, Barron got caught with a jewel, and now we can't have mint pods anymore. There is no evidence to back or refute his claim. However, Donald gave a little credence to his claims when he stated in an interview that, We haven't told him anything but, Don't vape, don't vape, referring to instructions that he and Melania gave Barron. Barron Trump became an uncle at a very young age. Very few people can say that they became uncles at the age of one, and Barron Trump is one such person. Described as protective and loving toward his nieces and nephews, Barron has practically lived his whole life as an uncle. A very young uncle, Donald Trump later noted of his then-toddler son in a 2009 appearance on Live with Regis and Kelly. He's a sweetheart. He's great. Barron is now the proud uncle of ten nephews and nieces, all of whom are Donald Trump's grandkids. These include Donald Trump Jr.'s five children with his ex-wife, Vanessa Hayden, and Eric Trump's two kids with his wife, Laura Trump. Barron's also uncle to three baby Kushners, children his older sister Ivanka Trump has with former Trump advisor Jared Kushner. All the kids, especially Ivanka's, seem to love their uncle. 
Now with Baron here, they have so much fun together and are so young. They're really just kids. So they are just enjoying it, Ivanka stated in a 2017 Fox and Friends interview. They spend a lot of time in the Oval Office with their grandfather, which is a lot of fun for them. Ivanka once shared a clip on Twitter depicting a smiling Baron in the background playing peekaboo and high-fiving her youngest son, Theodore Kushner. My youngest brother proves he's a baby whisperer, while my father signs his first executive orders, she wrote. Baron Trump took his classmates to the White House. Imagine being a dreamy-eyed kid in the White House. Most kids would do anything to have that experience. Well, Barron made it happen for his classmates. Considering Barron's enviable position as the son of former President Donald and First Lady Melania, one shouldn't expect anything less. The youngest Trump brought a group of 80 kids from his fifth grade class at Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School to the White House for a souped-up tour, according to Page Six. The tour was said to have included a meet-and-greet with the president. His lucky classmates were dressed in their very best for the special occasion and were escorted by Secret Service agents as they toured the White House. According to a source, Barron was on his best behavior for the A-list field trip. They had a buffet lunch and a tour of the White House and met the President and the First Lady, Melania Trump, the insider revealed. President Trump gave them all a rousing speech about living up to your potential and being the best you could be for your country. Barron was really sweet. He was so excited to show his classmates around the White House. The tour wasn't restricted to the Oval Office either. Barron and his classmates embarked on a tour of the city as well. They stayed the night in Washington, D.C. before heading back to New York City the following morning. How's that for a scintillating childhood memory? Barron Trump was absent from his father's farewell speech. Goodbyes are never easy. And for the Trumps, saying goodbye meant that they'd be vacating the White House for new occupants. Incidentally, Barron Trump was nowhere to be found during this pivotal moment at the end of his father's presidency. Donald was flanked on either side by his family as he bade the people farewell on the tarmac while awaiting to board Air Force One out of Washington, D.C. Barron, however, was conspicuously absent on this occasion. He also wasn't cited leaving the White House for Joint Base Andrews to watch his father wave goodbye to the presidency, according to People. Although there are no clear reasons as to why Barron was absent on that day, his absence was heavily noted by the press. Incidentally, Barron boarded the same Air Force One plane with his parents en route to Florida. However, he decided to skip out on his father's last presidential remarks for some reason. Donald famously told the crowd, Have a good life. We will see you soon. Was this an allusion to his latest presidential bid? We would never know. But one thing's for certain in all of this. We won't be seeing the last of Donald Trump for a long time to come. What this means for Barron is not so clear yet. However, the youngest Trump would hope that the future would be far kinder to him than the past has been. Do you think that Barron Trump has had it more difficult than most first kids in recent years? If yes, why do you think so? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. Hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video.